Okay. I've got another question. Okay. Uh, when when you do this intensive, to whom is it normally directed? What level of awareness do you normally direct this intensive to? Well, we go where we're invited to go, and. Um, like we did one in Traverse City that was about two weeks, and there were people there that came. I mean, everybody seems to have a little different level of awareness and everything. <coughs> there were people that came for a couple of days even and said, well, this is too deep for me. It's not as helpful as, and we were going to be going deeper and deeper over two weeks, and so they said, this isn't for me now, and then they, they left. And a number of people stayed, I guess it was about 11 or so that stayed for the two weeks. And so we throw it out. I mean, it's the course is a tool that has all these different levels in it. And the whole, the whole object is to go as deep as you can, and the whole object is to wake up so that you come to a state of mind that there's no pain, that it's pure peace, peace of mind. You're not speaking of within the term of the intensity. No. In the sense of, I don't put a time limit on it. In other words, to me, it has everything to do with ready, level of readiness of the mind, which is highly individualized. There are many levels of readiness. <coughs> and it has to do with desire. And, for example, we just came from Adrian, and, and there were just enormous mind shifts in the span of one week, where people had been working with the Course, sometimes dabbling in and out for a while. And, it's, and they really were... Intent. I mean, they came. And they were there in the morning. Some of them in the afternoon and the evening. They didn't. Some of them at the end of the week stopped going to work. It was profoundly touching to them, and they were having these shifts, and they were seeing everything differently. I mean, there were a lot of shifts taking place. So once again, all I do is I kind of sow the seeds, and people. It all depends on their level of readiness and their desire. There is no clear. normal. Yeah, there is no normal in this. Like that, and, and that's what I've learned from, mm -hmm. from being involved in a few of them. Mm -hmm. It's like... We started at the very beginning with a real basic level. And there's... We're going to leave the tapes, too. And a lot of times, it's, it's helpful. It's just the mind is... These terms are so new. It's kind of like last night. I used that metaphor of like a little baby, where a little baby, mm -hmm. when he comes into the world, he hears, sees all these figures moving about him, and he hears all this noise. And, he's, and Jesus was saying from that quote last night that that will become, those will become his comforters and that will be his native tongue, all that gibberish. And initially, I mean, I've studied many different philosophies, many different spiritualities. This is very clear. I mean, if you want to cut through the muck, you know, which could take, you know, thousands and thousands of years, this is a way of, of coming to a clarity and waking up. It, it's a, I like to think of it as a very sharp tool. There are many tools, but this one's a very sharp one. And also, there's there's lots of resistance that comes up to the ideas. There's it can take many forms. It's kind of like you just take what you can take, though. There's no sense of anybody being coerced or rushed. And as questions start coming up, then that that's when to ask them. Yeah. yeah, but 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 I have always found that there has to be a relative degree of understanding before you can ask a question. So, you know, I really, I'm, this wasn't exactly, to be quite frank, what I thought that it might be. Where I'm at is more in dealing with my day-to-day -day interactions with other people on a more spiritual level. I try to explain this to other people who are close to me so they understand what's going on because they tend to wonder what on earth is she up to all the time. She's constantly changing and getting into something new and different and where is she going? Mm -hmm. And I'm more interested in absolutely dealing with my ego. Now I don't, I'm not at the point where I feel that I can, I don't think I've learned enough from dealing with my ego to let it go and go somewhere else. I'm trying to blend the two, which I understand is not a possibility in the overall scheme of this course, but that's where I'm, I'm at. I'm trying to tone down the ego, be a softer person, less intense, um, more understanding, forgiving, and so forth. And this, so far as I've been able to take anything out of it, has not helped me 
learn how to deal with it, it's telling me that you have to deny the ego or deny it or, or realize that it isn't important. And at this point in my life, it is very important because it's causing me a lot of stress. <coughs> So well, tonight what we're going to do is we're going to use this sheet that's a real practical sheet for taking your upset whenever you like you have an interpersonal upset with somebody and you're feeling a little miffed at them or a little irritated or whatever and then writing down how you're feeling at the top of the sheet and then it's a metaphysical tracing working it back into the mind to try to get your mind to a place where it can see it, see it differently, perceive it differently and choose a miracle. And a lot of the stuff that we've talked about, particularly that first day, we got, it gets into some basic metaphysical understanding that, that's very important. And the more you understand the metaphysics, the more meaningful the sheets will become. And the easier the tracing back <coughs> gets. In other words, initially, but I've heard people will take this sheet and they will just use it. They'll even, uh, make lots of copies of it. They'll punch holes and they'll make a, a binder. Because the ego seems so entrenched and so deep, like you're saying, that that to think of, of completely letting it go initially seems like, wow, well, that's, you know, uh, To me, it's, 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 it's one mile after another. The journey may be a hundred miles long, but I can't just say, okay, I'm there. I have to yes. take it mile by mile. Yes. And my ego may, in fact, only be on mile two, but I've got to get through that yes. in order to go further. Yes. So that, good. Also, too, my approach always has been to start with what people are perceiving, you know, in pra as practical problems, and, and you start with that and you work it back. Mm -hmm. So my approach hasn't been going around the country and just going deeply into the metaphysics. Everywhere I've gone, twice around the continental United States and all kinds of places, has been the same thing of coming together, sometimes not for a period of a week, sometimes it's for a weekend or for an evening or for an afternoon, mm -hmm. but the whole process is, Start where you're perceiving yourself, and I mean, even think like your discussions on Tai Chi, you know, you may have questions about how all that fits in. You know, the deeper you go, everything just starts to click in and integrate, and until you get to the deeper levels, then it's kind of like more of like a smorgasbord, like, hmm, that feels comfortable over there. I don't know <coughs> how or why that, that fits in, but I feel like I want to do Tai Chi, or I feel like I want to do certain types of meditation, or, you know, things like um, diet, exercise, um, you know, healing, practices. healing practices, you know, hands-on and all kinds of different things. We know we can talk about those, any mm -hmm. subject, because I, I know that everyone here, including you, have, have been in spirituality for some time, and what the Course does is it just starts to integrate everything in the ideas of mind, mm -hmm. and it starts to pull everything together. So all of a sudden, everything starts to have meaning. Instead of being like little things orbiting off here, like I don't know exactly how how the chakras relate to Tai Chi or to the diet or this or this. It seems like there's lots of things on the surface, but you know, it, it all starts to integrate. So anything that anybody wants to bring up is, is fair game. I think in some ways you may have felt like I feel at times, but like one of the things I learned from another place and another time is that especially with this ego some of us have to be somebody before we can be nobody and before you know we feel we got to do all these things and when you start building them all up and doing them then you find out that like hey uh, it's not all it's cracked up to be and then you can begin or at least I can begin to let some of that ego go I haven't let it all go but you know I find that how the ego has led me on to do all these different things uh, really wasn't it and so uh, now I've been there and now I can sort of come back and sort of try and dissolve it. To well that's way. where I think <clears throat> I am because I've allowed my ego to put me in a corner too many times and I don't like that position. It's not very comfortable and in the past I have just found a different room to be in that has different corners and then I'll be damned <laughs> end up in one of those corners again. So what I'm trying to do now is uh, I'm realizing that I need to approach situations in a manner that says, well, wait a minute, why am I, why am I allowing Beverly's behavior to threaten me? Because it really doesn't. It doesn't mean anything one way or another. So I'm trying to deal with these common everyday things, uh, dealing with people that I can't just walk out on. I mean, I can, I can, I can 
I can leave you and never see you again, and that'll suit me just fine. I, I can do that with people I know well when they put me in these corners when I allow them to. I don't have to see you anymore. I can deal without you. But in some situations, like extended family members or people that you work with, it's impossible to do that. And so I've learned the hard way that i got to stay in that corner or figure out how not to get in it next time. So that is pretty critical to me, but it's one of those things where you're forced into it because of an emergency. <laughs> it's something that just has to be done because now you're there. So I'm there. <laughs> and it doesn't feel good when no. we feel like we're having an irritation with someone else. It's, we have a sense inside that says there has to be a better way. There has to be something better than this instead of just repeating it or keep going on. Okay. And I can, I can look at these individuals and I can rationalize and I can say this woman is in pain. This woman is not happy about herself. Why are you letting this distress you? You know, why are you letting this behavior infringe on your comfort? And I haven't quite figured it out yet. So that's one component of why I've been searching and trying to find a better way. Go ahead and this out. The sheet out. And what I, what I'll take. This first one that has writing on it, everybody take one copy of that. So it's got 12 steps, kind of like the 12-step program, instead of having to go to a 12-step group, you can get out your little sheet and say, and we left a little space over here so you could even punch uh, holes in. A lot of times people will do that, we'll work with these things and we'll put them in a notebook, and then when you feel like the ego is really going on and saying, you haven't proved in the last year or done this or that, you can go through it and you can say, ah, I have improved that you know if you look at through your notebook you can see I have made some progress because so it can kind of be a way of charting a little bit of progress or at least it can be a symbol of progress when the ego kicks in and says you yeah. haven't improved one bit in the last six months you can say oh yes I have <laughs> I'm right here. there's some upsets that I have let go of right yes. you look back at 1a and, and think oh my goodness I, I remember when that used to upset, upset, upset me it doesn't bother me anymore yeah. you know and then it's real, it's real uh, witness to yeah. the mind that, yeah. you know, that, that, that the mind can change its mind. Mm -hmm. It starts off, the mind of peace is healed. The mind of peace has wholeheartedly welcomed peace. In this world, lack of peace appears in many forms. For permanent healing to occur, lack of peace must be traced back to its singular cause in the mind. Use of this instrument for that tracing back can help a willing mind let go of what it thinks it knows, see the world differently, and experience a present state of peace and joy. So that singular cause in the mind, this lack of peace, again, that would be the ego when we talk about go into right mind and wrong mind or Holy Spirit and ego, that's, that's the cause of all the upsets. <laughs> It's just the ego. It doesn't seem that way. Initially, when you start working with these things, it seems like, you know, if you have a, an aching back, there might be 15 reasons that might come to mind. You know, if I hadn't been carrying those groceries, or, you know, if I hadn't, uh, if I had just a little more sleep and I'd rested it, or, you know, all the things or that can come to mind. It's an occupational hazard. I'm a dentist. It's a given. Right. <laughs> it's tied in with occupation, this and that. It's, that's what it seems like on the surface, but th what this sheet will help us do is trace it back to it's just the ego. It's just the decision for the ego. That's where the the upset of the pain is coming from. Should we use a, an example? or? Yeah. If you can think, like what I was saying, sometimes interpersonal, if you're thinking of a person that you're having difficulty with or, or something, could be anything that's going on, it's just upsetting that there's a lack of peace around. And it can be a small thing too. It doesn't have to be like this major <laughs> hair in the sink. Can yeah. type, uh, that was one that we've done a couple times. <laughs> that always comes to mind. It's like a, one of those minor yeah. things. You know, it's like what? even that. The bugs me. Yeah, anything. Okay. Was that one that you're thinking of? Something that would be that we could use. That we could use. 
like a, a hair in the sink? No. <laughs> no. One of your interpersonal. No. Oh, I guess you could. Work. About a co-worker or something? Is that a specific um, experience you're having or uh, is that just... I have a specific experience. I don't want to use...